Hey, this is Doek DF, and today we're looking at the 2024 Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. Uh, we're looking at the shreds of paper kind of mini challenge that comes between the Frosted Keypad and the Hardware Hacking 101. Um, in solving Frosted Keypad, they give me a zip file that is a thousand images, and it's supposed to be like a, a document that was put through a shredder. And so they also give us a script and one of the hints. And it does, it's actually a really cool script because what it does is it uses NumPy to look it grabs a, it grabs one of the strips at random. It looks across all the pixels going down the strip, and it finds the one that it thinks is the most likely similar has the most is the most similar to this one, and it appends it to the right side. And then it does so and keeps going until it gets to the end. Um, and there's some issues with it. For one, it uh, starts in the middle of the, of the document, so it kind of goes to the edge. Then the edge has some white space, which also has white on the other edge. So those match up nicely, and then it goes and keeps going. Um, it's also mirrored because the, the images, as I'll show you, are one pixel wide, so you can't really tell which direction you're going, so it actually goes the wrong direction. But it's, I, these are things I can fix, and I think most people solve the challenge by fixing it that way. But if you look more closely at the EXIF data on the images, there's a comment that holds some base64 data. And in this video, we're going to dig into that data. Uh, we're going to recover an Easter egg that shows um, a story, part of the story. Holiday Hack Challenge loves its stories, and we're going to dig into that. Um, and uh, it also gives me a clue how to perfectly assemble the image. So we're going to do that as well. Um, let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, we'll start here. We get this uh, shreds.zip, which I will unzip here very nicely. And we can look at the, all, it's all in the slices folder. Um, so if we do that, uh, we can do this into word count. These are a thousand of these things. Um, and uh, we have a thousand images. We can open one of them. Uh, open it up. Let's see, FF7. One of them at random. You can see down here at the bottom there are a thousand pixels. There are one by a thousand pixels, so it's a thousand tall, one wide. Um, they all have that same thing. Um, we can zoom in on them here. This is nothing super interesting, but there's this is this is my this is what I have. I got a thousand of these. Um, we can also look at the EXIF data on that. So if you use EXIF tool to spit this out, um, there's EXIF data, and the part that's interesting here is this one right here, the user comment. Um, this data. It looks kind of like a base 64 alphabet to me. Um, and in a CTF, especially kind of a gamified one like Holiday Hack, um, anytime you see anything that looks remotely like base 64, you should try to decode it. In fact, we can do that. Uh, if we echo that into base 64 minus D, um, it definitely is base 64 encoded. So it sort of looks like an, ar 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 an array or a list of two items, um, two strings, and that's what we got. Um, let's go ahead and take this chance. Let's go ahead and open up VS Code. And uh, we will close you. Let's see. Uh, let's do a touch on threads.py. We can come over here and open that up and close you down. Um, and we're going to use Python to go into this. So I played a little bit with trying to get the pill library, which is the Python image library. I don't that's what pill stands for. Um, that's great with working with images. In fact, we're going to use it later in the video when we put the image back together. Um, but I tried to get it working to read the metadata, and I was not able to make it work. If you did, please leave me a comment. I'd love to know how this um, actually works. But I, it was just finicky, and I couldn't. Um, I found this library called EXIF that worked really nicely. Um, so we're going to use that. Uh, to use that, we need to pip install it, which we will need a virtual environment now. So we can say Python minus MVENV. We'll make a folder named VENV. Uh, we will source venv bin activate. So now we're in the virtual environment. We can now pip install exif like that, and it will install just fine. Um, we can come over here, and now we can do import exif like that. Now, what do we want to do? Uh, I'm also going to get pathlib. So we'll say from pathlib import path. Um, I've been trying to use this instead of it, it's super convenient for working with paths. It's way better than OS. Um, so I highly recommend. Um, so we want to do a loop, and this is where pathlib will shine. We'll say file, we'll say file path in path and we'll slices. So we give it the folder name. Like that, uh, and then we'll say dot glob, which will allow us to search in that directory for anything dot star dot jpg like this. And now we're going to loop over all of those things, uh, not from. We'll say for, like that. Now uh, here, what are we going to do? We'll say exif data equals uh, exif dot image. Well, I don't know why we have exif read up here. Let's get rid of that. Like that, exif dot image. And we just need to pass it the file path. 
and this will give us an exif object. Um, and what I'll do here actually is I will just come down here and put pass so I can go to breakpoint and we can just run this. If I hit F5, Python file, and we ran it to this point, you can see we've done the whole loop. We ran all thousand of them, which happens very quickly. Uh, exif data is this exif data object. So let's, we'll, we'll shrink this down and we'll go to the dub, debug console and see what we got. Uh, if we expand this out, has exif is true, user comment, pulled that out just fine. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff here, but we got what we want. So what if we actually do dot user comment like that? And boom, there's the data. So we can now say uh, comment is equal to exif data dot user comment like that. And we could do something like uh, print comment here and run this again. And boom, it's spitting all those out. Awesome. So now we can start to decode it, right? The next step is to do from base 64, import b64 decode. And we'll come down here and say b64 decode around view. And if we run this again, we're spitting out our things. Those are looking nice. Um, now I actually want to load these as objects. I want to get this and make this actually an array, an array of two strings. So I'm going to use JSON for that. Because um, JSON, you think of it as being squiggly brackets, but it uh, arrays and lists are part of that as well. So we can do uh, import JSON. And then down here, we can say json.loads for load string here. And then what do we want to call this thing? We'll call it like, uh, we'll call it KV. I don't know if we'll save them as those two things. Let's see, does that work? Oop, comments going to fail. It's not going to like that. Um, but did it work here? Let's just see. We can test K and V. So those are looking good. Okay, we're happy there. Um, let's see. What's the best way? What should we be printing here? Uh, F string, we'll print uh, K, whoa, colon V like that. And now we rerun and we're getting our stuff. Um, now this is where it takes a little bit of like, let's just look at the data we're getting. Um, the data on the left, it's all four characters. Interestingly, I don't know if it's, well, I don't know if it's always four characters, but it's certainly almost always four characters. We see a lot of like equal sign, double equal sign. This looks kind of base 64-y again, except for, it's in a reverse order, um, like it, like the equal signs are forming at the end. Um, so we can say, well, what if this is just reverse? That what if it's reverse base sixty four again? So we could say, um, k. Let's see, what if we do k uh, colon like this? So that'll oops, that'll reverse the order of the string, uh, and then we say base b b sixty four decode on that that. And let's run that again and see what happens. Um, and look at this, we're getting numbers out of here now. Um, now that's actually super cool to me because the numbers, um, well, they have meaning. Um, let's, so let's do some experiments. We want to look at those numbers. I'm going to jump over to terminal here because it's a little bit easier than to do some stuff with that. So if we do um, Python, what did I call it? Sh uh, shreds? Shreds.py? Okay, so my question is, how unique are these numbers? So I'm going to do a cut minus D colon uh, minus F1. That's going to give me just the first bit here, uh, I would have thought. Uh, minus F1, boom. So now I've got just these. I'm also going to go, well, that, that's fine for now. So the question I have now is, what if I sort these? Um, so if I do a sort, and oops, I didn't, I, I didn't get the F there. Okay, if I do a sort. Cool, they're, they're sorting numerically. Um, they're sorting as strings, not as numerical, um, but th there definitely seems to be pretty unique. Um, let's make sure, so we should have a thousand of these. So I'm just gonna print into a word count. Yeah, we still have a thousand lines, that's what we expected. What if we do a sort uh, dash u? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna unique them. So just give me your unique values. And the fact that I still have a thousand lines means that these are a thousand unique numbers. So these numbers are unique, that's perfect. Um, what we're going to do then is we're going to say, let's come down here and say um, idx is equal to, let's go ahead and grab all of u. And let's just make that right into an int. And then we can come down here and do idx. And if this works, we should see, let's see, get rid of u, boom, okay. And now if we do a sort uh, minus n, let's see if that does for us, look at this, we have numbers one to a thousand, and our text is still there. Um, now this stuff, we talked about this a little bit. This looks like text, like it looks like words. I saw 
like a the in here somewhere. Here's a the, here's an S comma like space. It looks like it's text. And so I want to try combining it in the order of these letters. So let's come down here at the end. We've now got our, um, well, let's, so if we want to do that, let's, we need to save it. So we'll say like meta equals this. And then we can come down here and say meta sub IDX is equal to V. And now instead of printing that, we'll do is come here and say, okay, so we've got this uh, dictionary that has keys that are the numbers and values that are that. So we can say um, dot, dot, dot join. So we're going to take all our values and join them together. I'm going to get the value for key value in meta.items. Um, now, if I did this, this would print it, but it wouldn't be, it's not sorted. It's just in the order that meta was created. I want to sort this. So I can do sorted around here. Now, typically you think like, I need to give sorted a key. But if you don't give it a key, what it's going to do is it's going to sort um, by sort of its default patterns. Meta.items is going to return a list of tuples, um, which is why we can then store them. Each tuple is going to have the key and the value, which is how we then store them in K and V. If we just sort on this, sort tuples is going to sort on the first value, which is that key. Um, so this is actually going to sort and do exactly what we want, sorting these items by the, uh, by the key, by the index. And then we're going to get the V for each of those and join them together. Um, we don't actually use this K, so we can actually make it an underscore in Python. That's how you say like, underscore is technically a variable, but it's like a variable. I'm just letting you know I don't care about it. Um, and so here we can do print. Let's see, an extra one there. And if we run this, we have our story. Um, long ago in a snowy realm of the North Pole, not too far away if you're a reindeer. So how cool is that? We've managed to pull a secret story out of the exit data. Um, but there's more we can do. Um, let's go back here. Oops, I wanted to, there we go. And we want to go ahead and collect, like, if the story comes apart that way, what if the images are also numbered in their correct order? But it's worth a try to see if we can assemble the image more perfectly. And spoiler alert, we can. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to come here and um, we're going to bring in pillow. So we'll say uh, from pill import image like that. Um, and now, let's see, what are we going to do? For each of these things, we're going to want, let's, let's create a list of images. So we'll say images is equal to that. And we'll do just like a dictionary, just like we did before. Images of IDX is equal to uh, image file path. So we're going to take each file path and save it so that now we have this image object with stored in a, with its index here. So now we can play with that. So what are we going to do? Um, let's go ahead because we always want to work with the images in order and I want to get rid of them. I just want to have a list of them in order. So we're going to say sorted images is equal to, and we'll do uh, I for, and we're going to do the same pattern we saw before, uh, underscore comma I in sorted images. So basically we're going to, sorted images is going to return a tuple where the first value is the index and the second one is the uh, image object. We're going to sort by that. So we sort by the index, which is exactly what we want. Then we're going to save the index and the throwaway variable. We're going to save the image in I, and we're going to then get the I and create sorted images. So we have a list of sorted images. Widths, we're going to say, we're going to get, we want to get all the widths and all the height. To do that, we're going to use kind of a funky um, expression here. Uh, I dot size for I in sorted images. And what this is going to do, this inner loop right here is going to get all of the sizes, which is actually a tuple of X size of height comma width. And this asterisk is going to then say, okay, blow that out. So now I have um, all of those. And then zip's going to put them back together so I get all the width and all the height. And so this is going to give me a list of all the width and a list of all the height. Now, I believe they're all a thousand or one wide and a thousand high. Um, but just to make this kind of generic, that's going to work nicely. And what I can then say is total width is equal to uh, the sum of widths because I'm going to be stacking these things next to each other. So now by making it the sum of that, I get the total width. I'm going to make a new image. And to get a height, again, I think they're all 1,000 high, but the safe thing to do is to make the height the maximum of all the heights. So we can say max height equals max, if I can type, where's, this, where's my x? There we go. Max, uh, max height. Uh, max, not height, uh, height. Whoa! There. Whew. I don't know why that was so hard. So now we have the size of a new image. We'll make it. So new image, we'll say image equals image dot new, it's an RGB. And we need a size of total width, comma, max height. 
boom, we got a new image. Uh, we're going to make an offset. We're going to start. We're going to start at zero. We're going to start at the left side of the thing. This is going to be our x offset, and you'll see how we use that in a second. So then we can say for image in sorted images. So we're going to loop over our images. We'll say new image. Dot, and this is very cool. We can just say dot paste, and we're going to paste in the image. And we're going to do it at what place? Well, the off, we're going to do it at offset for the x offset, and we're going to do it zero just at the top of the image for the y offset. And now we can say offset plus equals uh, image size zero. So however far we paste it in, let's move over, and that's our new offset. And when we're done, we'll have new image dot save uh, results dot jpg. And uh, I think we're done here. Let's see if that works. So if we save this, come back here. We run it. Oops, I did not mean to sort. We run it. We have no image. Oh, we have no image pill. Um, so let's do pip install pillow. Should work for us. Uh, mutable object is not callable. Oh, it's not because I need open like that. Does that look better? That looks better. We're getting. Oh, because. I don't want images. I want images. Items. That's what returns the tuple. And that seemed to work. And if we open results.jpg, we get the pristine result. So, um, yeah, I think this was super fun. It was none of this was necessary. Um, you could solve this very easily with the script they give you and kind of the really neat heuristic check for the which image goes next to each other. Um, but this was a fun little rabbit hole to go down. I got to read a cool little poem. It's definitely worth checking out. And uh, that's the fun of Holiday Hack, right? It's just digging into the rabbit holes and figuring out places to go. And I love that they leave these Easter eggs for us. Um, so that's it for this one. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Talk to you back.